you seems as though you're going to sleep. So I guess I should probably help you with that. Well, this video is going to be partially rambling. So that you can hopefully get to sleep easier. But I am also going to be reading part of my English essay. It's, um, it has a very, a very sensitive topic, so it might trigger some of you, so please keep that in mind. The trigger is racism. We are doing a racism unit, so this is going to be about racism. If you think that you may be triggered or offended by that, I strongly advise you to please click off of this video. I will understand. It's a tough topic for some people. So again, please click off now. Here is my essay. America is divided, segregated by race, even in 2020. Equal rights are a concept that has taken decades to somewhat achieve. It will take decades more to do so fully. However, we can take steps towards a new tomorrow, in which blacks and whites can be seen as equals, and not as different. Voting can help bring America together, so we can truly be the United States. Two passages express this idea unlike any others. Malcolm X's The Battle or the Bullet, and John Lewis's Ordinary People with extraordinary vision. Although the racial injustice in both the speech and the article are prevalent, it is important to emphasize the fact that Malcolm X's speech was from a civil rights activist standpoint, and John Lewis's passage is written from modern times in order to compare the two passages. First, voting is an important practice to participate in one vote could change what our country needs, but it could also be the catalyst for more democratic destruction. However you vote, you have the power to change the country. In Malcolm X's speech, he stresses that the vote is the most powerful nonviolent change agent you have in a democratic society, in paragraph one. This means that voting can create a large impact on your life and the lives of those around you without causing any fights or violence. With the world in its current status and America's election being the cause of the country's calamity, the nation could use a police and leader. You must use it because it is not guaranteed. You can lose it. This means that not everybody has the privilege to vote, and you can lose it at any time. Voting is really important, so it's important to actually do it too. It's got to be the battle or the bullet. Oh, battle. <laughs> I meant ballot, sorry. The ballot or the bullet. This means that people back then either participated in the rights they were given, or were shot. So as you can see, towards the end it kind of got a little jumbled and messed up, that's because it's still a work in progress. Um, I don't know. I'm not really that great at writing, but again, this is still just a work in progress. So obviously it's not even close to being finished, but I got kind of bored while writing my English essay, so I decided to record another video for you guys. Because I'm actually currently in school right now. Well, online school, because my school kind of has a hybrid thing where sometimes we're online and sometimes we're in person. It's pretty annoying having to wear a mask for six and a half hours a day, but, you know, if that's what the government orders, it's what we gotta do. And also, it'll keep us safe and all that, but it's still a bit inconvenient and very hard to breathe in. But it's what we have to do. So I can complain about it, I just... I mean, I don't want to do it, but I have to. And I feel like that's how we all feel in a way. Anyways, I guess I should probably ramble to make this video up to 10 minutes long. 
We've only reached the five minute mark so far. Did that fly by for you? Maybe it seemed to take way longer than five minutes. Anyways, not much has been going on in my life lately. But something happened today that I would like to talk about. Because I'm very proud of myself for doing it. I was kind of in a play. Not a regular play, of course, due to social distancing. And not a socially distanced six feet apart with masks on play, either. It was a radio drama, sometimes called a radio play. Where we're all online in a video chat. And we just kind of read our lines to each other. It was really exciting and fun. And my theater teacher seemed to really like my performance. So that makes me assume that I did pretty well. I can't be too sure, though. If you would like, maybe I could read some of the lines that I had in the play. Maybe you would like that. I think I'm going to do that now. To start off, I was the announcer in the play, so I was the one who started the play. And being a very shy person who gets extremely anxious, starting off the play is not exactly a very ideal position for myself, but I will read it. The Columbia Workshop, under the direction of William N. Robson presents Alice in Wonderland. The Columbia Workshop tonight essays a new type of experimentation with this. Oops, sorry, I messed that up. The Columbia Workshop tonight essays a new type of experimentation with this. The first part of this dramatization of Lewis Carroll's classic, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. The music, which has been specially written for the broadcast by Lee Stevens and Paul Starrett, will function not only as radio music usually does in setting scenes and moods, but will also suggest various sound effects. Mr. Robson, guest director, who adapted and is directing this production, and Irving Reyes, the permanent direction, I'm sorry, director of the workshop, would like to know what you, the listener, thinks about it. The Columbia Workshop presents Alice in Wonderland. And I didn't have many lines for a long time. Also played the parts of the dodo and the duchess. So here are my lines for the dodo. Quiet, all of you. If you really want to get dry, then the uh, best way is a, a caucus race. Why the the only way to explain it is uh, uh, to do it. The race is over. Just a minute. Just a minute. Let me think. Everybody has won and almost have prizes. Why, she, of course. Yes, you. Of course. What else have you got in your pocket, little girl? Hand it over here. Thank you. We beg your acceptance of this uh, elegant thimble. And now, while well, we eat our prizes, and that I didn't have many lines, well, any actually, until we get to the Duchess part. Where she has an extra loud sneeze, but obviously I'm not going to demonstrate that because I don't want to scare anyone. And after the sneeze, her next line is, It's a Cheshire cat, and that's why, pig. No. I was speaking to this brat. That happens every afternoon at four o'clock. Speak roughly to your little boy. Achoo! And beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy. Achoo! Because he knows it teases. Wow, wow, wow. And then her next line is, 
I must go and get ready to play croquet with the queen. And then I don't have any lines for a page until I get my last line as the announcer. So ends the first half of the Columbia Workshop dramatization of Alice in Wonderland. Next Sunday at the same time, the workshop will present the second half of this immortal classic, Alice's visit to the Mad Tea Party, the Queen's Croquet Game, the Mock Turtle Story, the Lobster Quadrille, and the exciting climax when all Wonderland attends the trial to determine who stole the tarts. The Columbia Workshop radio version of Alice in Wonderland has been adapted and directed by William N. Robson. Foster and Leith Stevens wrote the original musical score, and Mr. Stevens conducted the orchestra. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. And that's the end of all my lines. Well, this video has reached 11 minutes, so I think this is the end now. I hope this helped you relax so you could get to sleep now. Good night.